The News Hour, in partnership with the Marist Institute for Public Opinion and NPR, is out with a new poll that looks at Americans' opinions on President Trump, health care, the economy, and more. Joining me now to dig into the results are Lee Marengoff of Marist and Amy Walter of the Cook Political Report. Welcome to both of you. Lee, I'm going to start with you. Let's look at one of the questions first about the Republican health care plan sure. uh, in the Senate. This is the plan the president's pushing for. You you, you ask people their assessment of the Senate plan. What did you find? Well, it, it was very poor in terms of, of public opinion. And what's fascinating in the numbers is even a plurality of Republicans around the nation are unsure on terms of the Senate health care plan. So the Republicans took a very big risk going forward with something when they didn't even have their core following solidly behind them. And I think the, the, the proof is in the results. I mean, the, you know, the Democrats obviously were opposed. Independents have been scurrying away from uh, the Republicans and, and questioning uh, President Trump and, and the Republicans in Congress in greater numbers. Um, so as far as the health care proposal is, is concerned, uh, it clearly did not have the kind of support uh, that you would want to go forward with uh, if you're trying to make such a major change. Just to quickly go over the numbers, approval overall, 17 percent of the Senate plan, disapproval, 55 percent. And then when you ask people if they approved of the way Republicans in Congress are handling yeah. health care, it was 21 percent approval, 65 percent disapproval. Amy, what yeah. does all this tell you? Yeah. Well, Lee makes a very good point. It's that even among Republicans, there's not a tremendous amount of support, not only for the bill, but for the way that Republicans in Congress are handling it. I think a very small plurality of Republicans said they like the job that Republicans in Congress are doing on this. Quite frankly, Republicans have not done a very good job shaping and defining this bill. It's being defined by what it isn't as much as by what it is. And that's be that's pretty clear in the polling data that, that we're seeing here. The other interesting thing that I found in this poll was that when, when they asked the question about who would you blame if this all falls apart, if there's no repeal of Obamacare, and most vote, most Americans, this is true of Democrat, Republican, Independent, they don't blame Donald Trump. They either blame Republicans, Independents and Democrats say they would blame Republicans in Congress. Republicans say they blame Democrats mostly. But Trump gets very little blame. What's really interesting is that although Obamacare really doesn't have a champion right now, uh, most of the talk has been how to replace and repeal, uh, it remains popular with Americans. Um, and I think so the Republican proposal not only wasn't well organized, it really flew in the face of what public opinion is. Uh, so they're really going uh, uphill on this. And I think that's why they've had such a difficult time with it. So, Lee, you also asked the generic question, what do people think of the job of the president is doing? And I think not surprising along party lines, a large majority of Republicans like what he's doing, a large majority of Democrats dislike it. But among independents, some interesting, uh, interesting results. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the independents are the group, of course, in the middle. And, uh, you know, they're much more like Democrats right now than Republican in terms of their attitude. And they have grown uh, in their disapproval of, of President Trump since the first poll right after he took office. And now uh, almost 60 percent of independents have a negative view of him. Uh, and those numbers have gone up. Uh, the negative numbers have. Uh, so there's a real question on their part about the direction the country is going in and a lot of other concerns that they have on an issue by issue basis, health care being one, uh, but others uh, of concern to independence as, as well. They were willing to give him the benefit of the doubt initially, but that has certainly evaporated in whatever political capital he had with this group uh, that's a been well spent or it has been spent, I should say. Amy, what do you see in these numbers, especially? among independents. Yeah, Lee um, framed it perfectly, which is whatever benefit of the doubt they may be giving, the, they may have been giving the president in January, and it was a very thin <laughs> uh, benefit. It's It's been dried up pretty well by now. But you're also looking, if you just think historically or look historically, at what it means to have some 
support for independence this low. And if you look at the last midterm elections where a president had low approval ratings with independence at this number, somewhere between 30, 35 percent approval rating among independents, they went on to lose a very large number of seats in that midterm election. And that really could be the tipping point for a lot of these Republicans, too, who are up in 2018. They may sit in districts that are Republican carried or that are Republican leaning, but they count on independents coming over and supporting the Republican in, uh, in the November election. If those independents are feeling dissatisfied or they're feeling dispirited, or quite frankly, they're feeling angry, that's the other in important thing to note about this poll. It's not that just that independents felt like they didn't approve of Donald Trump. Their strong disapproval ratings of Donald Trump are somewhere, the President Trump, are somewhere in the 40 percent range versus just, yeah. I think it's in the teens that strongly support him. Yeah. So that intensity of disapproval is a real, should be a real warning sign for all Republicans, yeah. especially those who are up in 2018. Very quickly, Lee, yeah, that, you that, also that, asked yeah. a question I hadn't seen before, and that was comparing uh, who was a more effective leader, President Trump or former President Obama. 34 percent President Trump, 58 percent President Obama. I guess that mirrors overall support for this president. Yeah, and look, and former presidents always do look better after they've uh, you know, taken, uh, completed their term in office. But at this point in President Obama's administration in 09, his numbers were in the mid 50s. Contrast that with the low to mid 30s with Donald Trump, and you see the answer to the question uh, why is this president having such a difficult time in the court of public opinion? All right. Fascinating numbers. There's more there. I know everybody will want to dig in. You can find it all on our website. In the meantime, Lee